the Bengals announced that they are hiring Justin Riscotti as a pass game coordinator. This is a completely new position for the Cincinnati Bengals in 2024, imagining that they are wanting to maybe uh, have a better uh, grip and uh, handle on the passing game and maybe uh, make it a little more easier on Joe Burrow to uh, find the open guys. So they're going to have a guy for uh, the, the coordination of that. And because of that, the Bengals also promoted Brad Cragthrope to the quarterback's coach and Jordan Kovacs to the secondary safeties coach. So some movement in the, uh, in the building, but more, of, more or less just uh, promoting from within. And, um, yeah, I think these are all good moves from the Bengals. It still, you know, consistency, that, that's the word that we would like to use. Um, just, you know, everyone's familiar with each other. Um, Brad's been working with Joe for a couple years now as the assistant quarterbacks coach. Uh, Jordan Kovacs, I believe he was the assistant secondaries coach. So he's been in the building um, for a while now too. I don't know about Justin Riscotti. I don't know what, what that, uh, who he would, where, where he came from. I haven't looked at it just yet, but um, I think all these are good moves from the Bengals. I, by the way, Casey, you know, we, we're not used to hosting this show from this side, so uh, yeah. we didn't get to say hello, Casey and Lindsay. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. Kelsey? I'm great. That's good. That's great. All right, Such well, a... we said hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Oh, hello, everybody. Uh, now, these moves on the long term, I mean, how, how much do they mean, really? Uh... I, I mean, just looking at, I mean, just looking at it, uh, I mean, this is these aren't massive moves, yeah? These are just, these are just you know... Pass. No, no, no. They, they, it's, it, it's the fact that they are going in a new direction, right? It's the first time the Bengals have hired a passing game coordinator, correct, Casey? Yeah, this is, this is the first time that they'll have a passing game coordinator, I think, in the Zach Taylor era. And uh, when you think of the, the coordinators themselves, like the offense and defensive coordinator, the offensive coordinator had a run game coordinator in our offensive line coach, can't remember his name off the top of my head. Um, drawing a blank at the moment, but we have a run game coordinator. We've never had a pass game coordinator, and I'm guessing it's going to be mainly coming up with new scheme design. That's what I would imagine. Maybe they're keeping track of what's going on in game, but they're not making calls within the game. They're they're more or less just uh, looking at it a week to week basis and saying we need to run these pass plays in order to be effective, successful against this team. It's just another layer of, of eyes to kind of help mold what the game plan will be. So what was – if you recall when um, Brian Callahan made the news that he was getting hired down in Nashville when he was going to take over the Tennessee Titans head coaching job, we did a live um, Chatterbox Bengals show, and the, the buzzword that evening – and it's still it, – it was a buzzword for about a week – was a fresh set of eyes, right? A new look. So someone that comes into the building – from the outside, that gives outside perspective into what the Bengals are doing. I think we can all admit that, uh, maybe not all. I know there's some Bengals fans that, that want more from this team, and I think that's fair, a fair expectation that with all the weapons that the Bengals have, that maybe they should be uh, a, a, an elite top-of-the-top top offense. I don't think that's uh, – I, 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 I think that's more than fair. So how do you get that without having new eyes? Because like, if, you, if you keep the same guys in the building, it's just more of the same. And that's exactly what the Cincinnati Bengals did, right? They, they elevate their quarterback's coach to, to offensive coordinator, someone that they all liked, right? Dan Pitcher. And then they go, all right, now we want a passing. We want somebody else to come in. They make a new role, and now they have fresh eyes looking at this offense. I don't think that this is a negative. Like, Elliot, I know it, it looks like a small move. I know it looks like a small move, but it's exactly what Bengals fans were hoping for. It's someone from the outside coming in to look at this offense and give outside perspective, which, as I've said on this show a thousand times in a thousand ways, collaboration is good. Change is sometimes good, more often good. So when you collaborate with other voices, with people from outside the system that said, hey, this worked for us in Minnesota, right? Because that's where uh, Raz Caddy came from. Pronounce that name right, right, Raz? I have no idea how to pronounce it. We didn't, have, get, didn't get a pronunciation No guy. pronunciation check. But when you get a guy coming from Minnesota and you say, hey, what worked for you there? 
What worked with Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson? What worked there? Comes in, looks at this, and said, hey, I think you can do this with Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. I think you can do this with your real weapon, Joe Burrow and Drew Sample. So, yeah, a fresh set of eyes. This this isn't something we're going to be talking about in three months. This isn't something we're going to be talking about in week eight of the season. But this is the kind of moves that you like, right? Evolution in the coaching staff, fresh set of eyes looking at the offense. That's fair. That's fair. That's, uh, so we broke that news. We broke that news. Casey, Go Bengals. Yeah, Casey, any other points on the, on the moves in the, in the free agent? Casey, any points? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you, you just explained it eloquently already. Um, I'm just looking at some of the stuff here. He was res- – I don't know how to pronounce his name. Just Justin. I'm going to just say Justin. Say now. Justin. Uh, Justin, he came from Minnesota as an assistant offensive line coach. Uh, he also previously served as the offensive quality control coach for Denver. Um, he was a quarterbacks coach for Tennessee in 2017, offense coordinator for Tennessee Tech. So he, he is very well versed in a lot of the uh, offensive scheming, game planning at many different levels. Uh, played quarterback for Louisville in 2003. That's interesting. So he, he's got a quarterback's background as well. I know a lot of the Bengals staff have uh, quarterback backgrounds, have uh, played in the N- – or not NFL, but they've played at, at a college level, at a high level at some point in their careers. So it's just interesting, some uh, fun facts there have, about the guy. And, have you noticed that uh, all offensive coordinators are one of two things? More likely than not, they're quarterbacks. Sometimes they're linemen. But it's, it, it's never a running back. It's never a tight end. It's never a wide receiver. It's typically linemen and quarterbacks. And the reason that a lot of quarterbacks, we talk about this in baseball, like why do catchers always become managers? Um, the reason that quarterbacks become offensive coordinators are is because they see the whole field. Same thing for catchers in baseball. The reason catchers make good managers is because they see the whole field. When you play shortstop, you're worried about being the shortstop. Right, you know you got to, you know you got to turn two, you know you got to throw it over to first base, you know you got to be the cutoff man. When you're the catcher, you got to make sure everyone's in the right position. You got to make sure that everyone's where they need to be. Same with quarterbacks. When you're when you're a slot receiver, you're reading, you know, the the linebacker or the safety coming down on you. When you're the quarterback, you've got to read everything. You got to read defensive line fronts. You got to do all that stuff. So. It's a good thing that there's more quarterbacks in the front office because these are guys that see the entire field. These are guys that have to, you know, make make adjustments on the fly. These are guys that 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 really have to understand the game at a higher level than really anybody else on the field. Same with linemen. One last thing I'll I'll add to this conversation: why this is a big deal. Um, the Bengals receivers, tight ends, anyone that was running a route last season, uh, they were one of the most covered pass catchers Mm -hmm. in the league. So defenses were covering them at one of the highest rates in the NFL. Joe Burrow is just one of the best quarterbacks. He's one of the most accurate quarterbacks, can make the throws to get them open. I think they were sitting at like fifth or seventh most covered unit in the league. So, I mean, part of that has to do with Joe Burrow being out half the season too, I'm sure. But, yeah, I mean, hopefully this uh, – that – helps and improves the, the, the way that they, they get open because we all know if you're open, Joe Burrow is going to find you and hit you. 